Hello, in this tutorial I'd like to show you ways to create interesting looking structures like these. For example, if you work for a movie and you need a, a sophisticated, highly detailed background, it needs to look good, of course, in a specific light, under light conditions, and uh, I show you ways to achieve this. I think this is quite a nice rendering here. Uh, it took uh, three minutes. It's a, quite a high resolution and uh, it uh, is a honey texture and we'll use this uh, with a scene I show you now. So this is an uh, animation I did in a previous tutorial. It doesn't really matter what it is, but we need complex geometry here in order to explore some light effects. And uh, this, for example, comes from an original uh, particle simulation. I converted the particles to polygon meshes, and then I created a mesh network. Mesh, that's this one here. And uh, the mesh network uh, replicated instances of this uh, object. So we have 10 of them in a, like in a, in a circle, which is not really visible. This is the center of the circle, and it's uh, basically 10 things which do basically the same and uh, they develop over time here and uh, it's uh, very slow now because Maya has to do many many calculations so we are far below real time here. So we can stop it somewhere and uh, let's rerun it and stop earlier so we have a nice view with not too many intersections here. So this is, I think, that's a, quite a nice state. Um, when we render it, we of course need a light and we create a sky dome light, light which is basically white and wraps around the whole scene. So now we render this uh, object and this is what we get. It already looks good because black and white aesthetics are always quite nice, but of course we can do better. So let's close this again. Uh, the first thing we can do is uh, we can go to the sky dome light here and um, up here we have the color and instead of having white we change it to another color like uh, well a bright blue like this and render it again. Maybe we like this better. We certainly don't. By the way the sky dome light which is blue now has an effect on this object. It's the only light source anyway, so this object turns blue as well. That's the reason why it was gray, lit by a gray, by a white lamp basically, and now it's lit by a blue lamp, so it looks all blue. So instead of uh, going for a blue color, let's map the color. Let's click here and we choose a ramp. And the ramp by default goes from black to white and uh, we currently don't really see it you can see it if you look down it's black down here it's white up here we want to want to see this here and in order to get it a little bit more interesting we can move this slider so the black moves from the bottom to the top and if we want more white at the top we can make the intersection more clear here and now we render it and that already looks very much more interesting than what we've seen before. I don't really know why that is just because of that simple ramp going from black to white uh, but it uh, gives us much more volume and depth all of a sudden. Of course it's underexposed but that doesn't matter in some creepy movies of spaceships we need the spaceship to fly through dark parts of the universe but of course we can uh, make this brighter with extra lamps or whatever uh, rendering done in 30 seconds well that's quite okay interesting also is we don't see any ref reflections here because it's a standard Lambert shader and the Lambert shader doesn't reflect anything but uh, of course the black and white background, the light basically, works on the simple texture here on the on the surface. No reflections. It has a cool effect. I think I quite like this.
What I'll do next here, I plant a little light somewhere like here. Let's try to do this. Um, create lights, point light, and the point light, where is it? It sits right here, it's almost at the proper place. Let's move it down here. And now let's render it again. The light's influence is very small. So we go down to the, this is the point light, we go down to the Arnold section. And here we have exposure. And we can raise the exposure here. It immediately leads our focus onto that spot. Something will be happening there. That's the impression we have. So now we have a sky dome light with a ramp going from black to white and we have an extra lamp which just um, illuminates parts of the geometry which is interesting already. So um, let's delete that light and uh, pick the sky dome and with the right mouse button we'll delete the color ramp break connection now we have a simple background which looks black and we don't see anything if we raise that here we can go back to the uh, gray image but instead we'll map it and this time not with a ramp but with a file and the file needs to be put in here so you browse your file folders and in the source images source images here I have several HDR images most of them from Wikipedia and I use the well San Giuseppe breach so it's Italy somewhere it's a 360 degree HDR a high resolution image uh, but not too large really it's 5.7 megabyte you can also have uh, files like 383 megabytes which take longer to load but for this purpose this is perfectly all right so let's open this and you see the um, parts of the scene in the background when we render it now we get this impression and this is very interesting because the uh, Lambert shader now has the tints of yellow and all kinds of other colors here so it's not gray anymore uh, although it's a gray shader uh, but it's not really dramatically blue or whatever. So now, uh, two things. First, we want to change this shader here. And um, let's go to right mouse button and new material. And we create an Arnold shader, a standard surface shader, which is here. And here in the presets, by the way, when we render it now, that's what it looks like. It looks much more shiny because it has uh, reflectiveness, this specularity. Um, we want to choose the presets and in the presets I want to go for honey and I replace the current shader by the honey shading. It's still an AI standard Arnold sh a surface shader but uh, we have all the settings now for honey. And does it look convincing? Well sort of this object in the middle here uh, is from a from a, it's the original actually for the mesh network so we can delete it now but this already looks quite honeyish but what we don't want to see is that background here we don't want to see that house and that street although it's a nice it's a very beautiful picture we don't really want to see it um, so first of all let's delete this and uh, we go to the sky dome light now and down here we have a section called visibility and if you don't want to see the background here but you want it to work on your textures and shaders you just reduce this value for the camera from 1 to 0 so we don't see that background anymore in the rendering but it still has the effect on our geometry
And uh, keep in mind, this is all animated. If we step one frame forward, it's a dynamic simulation. It will be a different shape. It will develop. It will get larger, basically, in this case. It's not very bright, really, but we'll change it in a second anyway, because we want something white in the background. Let's see how the honey works on white. There are several ways to introduce white, white as a general background. Uh, we cannot map the sky dome light with a white color now because we use the HDR image which works on our scene and we want to keep this. So instead, let's um, create a polygon plane which arrives in the center of the scene and we scale it up like this and we rotate it, I pr I press and hold the key J to do that snapping so it's rotated by 90 degrees now and now uh, scale it up even more and let me go to view camera settings resolution gate because that's the uh, aspect of our scene which is going to be rendered this one now let's render it And what a beautiful impression we get now. Now the question arises, why do we see not all of the geometry? We saw much more of the geometry earlier. And the reason is, of course, where the plane, the white plane we just introduced, uh, sits. Actually, it's a gray plane currently. It has a Lambert shader. And we can pump this up so it's going to be white. And now, when we rotate the scene, you see that it's sitting in the middle, because that's the center of the scene where it arrived anyway. So it's sitting in the center of our geometry, sort of. So we can move this back and make more geometry visible. And render it again. An interesting effect now would be, but I'm not going to do this because I don't have time for it, uh, is to animate the background image, the white plane, by moving it from more to the front to the back, sort of. So you see more and more of these blobs of honey, or less, so it depends on how you move that plane. Uh, and while you move the plane, of course, the simulation still works. So the honey works by itself. So it's developing all the time. Well, that's well, That would be quite an interesting thing. But I think this is uh, uh, quite beautiful here. And I wanted to show you nothing else really than uh, this took one minute to render. Uh, then uh, creating a nice effect with a complex geometry. And you can use this knowledge all the time in computer animation. Complex geometries looking beautiful. Bye bye.